What's going on, YouTube? Warstorm here, coming at you guys with another video today. I know, you know, this is going to be a weird upload considering I haven't uploaded in a while, and everyone else has probably already talked about the man list with their, you know, big mouth thumbnails, but, um, I'm gonna kind of, like, this is going to be more in-depth, I'm gonna be talking about these things a little bit more, um, but as far as what I've been up to, I just kind of stepped away from Yu-Gi-Oh! for a little bit. I have been playing, I have been still been keeping up with the game a little bit, but I just kind of took a small break because... Um, while I, I do, you know, have decks I enjoy playing, like I was playing Sky Striker, was playing, um, was, I st was still playing Pendulum uh, Dot deck, I just took a step away because the format was getting to the point where the Diggy's decks had been around for so long that it really was getting kind of boring. Like, for example, when I went to, last time I went to Locals, um, like a week or two ago, like I literally just, my opponent had a Colossus and that's all he could do. And I looked at my hand, draw my sixth card, and I literally cannot do anything because all the cards in my hand search. <laughs> so while that no longer will be an issue, as we can see on the screen right now, um, it's it, I just needed to take a step away from the game for, for a while. Um, but as far as what's going to be going on the channel, will I be uploading again? I do think so, yes. Um, my plan is, uh, actually the biggest plan I think is we're going to start we're gonna start what's going to be called the PDC podcast. It's going to be just me and a friend talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe some other topics as well. Um, I don't, there's not really a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! related podcasts on the platform I've noticed. So it's more so filling a gap, I feel like, is something I think I'd like to do a little bit more consistently. Um, I'm not sure how often it'll be up. I'm hoping maybe to make it weekly, bi-weekly, something like that. But um, we're more than likely going to start very, very soon. Um, one of the things that um, Ian and Corey were saying, that some of the guys are going to be on the podcast, was that they wanted to make sure that they wanted to wait until the ban list dropped, until Ignition Assault dropped, because there wasn't really a whole lot to talk about because the format was so damn stale. So they wanted to make sure though that the ban list dropped and Ignition Assault was coming out before we did the uh, before we did a podcast so that's going to be starting very soon i'm also going to be updating um McKnight invoked to something i'm going to be i have built and i'm going to start playing that again i do think that deck is a little bit stronger after this list especially with colossus gone so and pendulum my 50 card pendulum good stuff is going to be um updated very very soon I'm planning on uploading a build with Celine and Needle Fiber and then kind of what I've got on hand as well. Um, so those will be coming very, very soon, I hope. Um, and for all the way, um, we will go ahead and get to the ban list. So the first two cards, as you can see on your screen right now, are Harpoor and Thunder Dragon Colossus are banned. Um, in the case of Harpoor, I think this is a preemptive hit because of... In Eternity Code, uh, Gursu, the new Mech Knight Orcus monster is coming out. And that deck is going to be pretty ridiculous, especially with Ib, with Ib as well. But, you know, we'll get to that in a moment. That deck was going to be really, really strong. And getting rid of Harpoor now means that people have to get Gursu later to play the deck again. And I think that's a good thing. Um, and I do think Orcus will be playable again when that card comes out. Because currently, without Harpoor, you can't really do a lot. But with, but with the new monster, what you can do is you can um, normal summon um, Gursu, send Nightmare, Nightmare will banish to summon, to send, um, and because it summons a token alongside it, if it's the only monster you summon, there will be the, the uh, one that, the skeleton, the one that special summons will be in the grave. So you can link into, um, you can link into Galatea, and then you can already do a lot of your Orcus things again. So that's one of the main things I do think, is that, um, Orcus will be relatively intact again, which is good, but also they're going to have a lot of more lines of plays with Gursu, and banning Harpoor now means people have to get Gursus later, which this is the theme of this ban list. People want, Konami is doing things on this list to encourage people to buy other cards, which granted, that's what the ban list is, one of the things the ban list is designed to do. Not only is it designed to stop people from playing decks for too long in certain circumstances, it's also, or to get rid of the elephants in the room, it's also there to push product in some cases, and that's something we're doing with this. This Colossus being banned, I think, was something that either it needed to go to one or banned, but banned I'm perfectly fine with. Colossus limits card design. Anytime Konami creates an archetype that needs to search, Colossus is around to say, fuck you, you can't search. So, inherently, it needs to be either at one or on the ban list. Things like Necros of Unicorn on the ban list, because Necros of Unicorn is a card that floodgates extra deck monsters, which inherently restricts 
you know, Konami design card design for Konami because as long if it's at multiples, it's really hard for decks that need their extra deck to function with it. So I think if Necros of Unicorn is on the ban list, then Colossus needs to be on the ban list too. It being banned, I'm no problem with it. I think it's it deserves to be on the ban list. Now does this kill Thunder Dragons? I think their viability has gone down quite a bit. I don't think they're going to be very good without Colossus, but we will see. Next thing on the list is Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, is, and and since other cards you see, such as such as Ib and others, which we'll get to, but Electromite being banned, I think this is very similar to the hit to Multi Faker and Light Stage a, a list or two ago, where they didn't want people picking up and playing those decks, so they hit them preemptively so people wouldn't start playing those. And with all the other decks being nuked, Pendulum, I think, is inherently one of the better decks. So nuking Electromite now, rather before it becomes a problem, especially if Selene is coming to the TCG and Dual Overload, makes a whole lot of sense. I don't, I'm not a fan of it being banned, and it's sad, but it makes sense. Uh, uh, Ib being banned, um, this is, again, a hit to Dragon Link. This is a preemptive hit, because if you nuke all the other decks, Dragon Link is really, really strong with Ib. You get rid of Ib, it's no longer a problem. And that's one of the, I think that's a big thing. If you, by getting rid of Ib, you eliminate that problem. So I do think that's something that was smart for Konami to do. Tempest Magician, I heard that there was an FTK with this card that was fly, was kind of flying under the radar. And like I said earlier, if Selene is coming to TCG and Dual Overload, it's going to be more consistent. So getting rid of Tempest Magician now before it becomes a problem, A-OK -okay, Konami, that's what you're supposed to do. As a thought being banned, um, I always said that um, the rank up magic sh um, wasn't the problem, more so was as a thought, and Konami seemed to agree with me. The card is just ri pretty ridiculous when you think about it. The fact that it restricts Konami. When there's ever there's an FTK deck running around, people can, if the deck can make rank four, it can make as a thought, and your opponent cannot respond after that as a thought is dropped on the board that is inherently unfair and it and i think that any time an ftk deck rolls around as a thought will continue to be a problem so getting banning as a thought i am perfectly fine with um mirage stallio is an interesting way to hit salmon great by getting rid of it you eliminate a lot of the plays with jack jaguar and now it's a lot less consistent for the deck to end on a rank four um but it's not like it's the only rank three you can play. I've heard Salmon Great players suggest the Fire Fist rank three. I don't think it's the best card, but if you have a gazelle that's already in Grave, you can recycle it and have it ready for next turn. It's not the worst thing in the world. Again, it's early. People are just spitballing ideas, so it might not be the best thing. But I don't think Salmon Great is really that much hurt by this ban list. And um, if anything, you know, sign up mining is going to be, you know, something that Konami's going to want to push anyways. Brilliant Fusion being banned is odd. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know why Konami chose to ban it now. I'm really, really not sure. If, if you know why, let me know in the comment section down below. But I literally have no idea why this was banned. <laughs> and Engage, um, I much like with Colossus, I would have been fine if they put it to one. But Sky Striker has been around for you know, one, almost two years now. I think this is just Konami's way of just getting the deck away, just nuking the deck. Um, and it happening now um, is kind of odd because the deck is getting future support. But I also don't think it's like it's as good as some of the support like Orcist is getting because the fact that um, if you put Engage to one, the deck is still kind of playable a little bit. So... I think they just don't think the new support is enough to really justify keeping Engage around. Um, so, I mean, it sucks because Sky Striker, you know. But I think, if anything, like this just means cards like Anchor and Multi Roll will be coming off the list. And the deck won't be meta, but it'll be playable again. So, you know, I, have, I guess you have that to look, I have that to look forward to. As far as the limits, Nessie, um, I personally would have preferred if they limited um, both. Uh, if they also put a jackalope here as well and put snack to, two, to three, I hate the semi-limit section. I don't. I would prefer no cards be semi-limited. Um, I've said that in the past. So I personally, you know, I feel like jackalope should be here too. But Nessie, it's a step in the right direction. I think. Pankertops, why? Like, I don't. Were people really playing Pankertops in their side deck this format? Did I miss something? I. Honestly, like even in my Sky Striker deck when I was siding Pankertops, I ended it's no longer in, in my, any of my side decks. Like, 
why is this card on the ban list? Like, the fact that I'm having to ask why cards are on the ban list shows that Konami's clearly, like, you know, making some poor decisions, I think. In Servant of Endymion, I think this is just another additional hit because Konami is going to release the, um, Selene, the Link monster for Endymion in Dual Overload. So, hitting Servant means that People can still play play her. She's still a viable card. It's just people will have to try, you know, play more of the mass, the big Endymion, and possibly play the other Endymion monsters, which are quite good. Master, I've heard, and Reflection, I've heard, are quite good cards. So we'll see. But I do think that this is. I don't agree with this hit at all because I just feel like it's it's just too much. Like you've already banned Electromite. Do you really need to do anything else? Um, Lithosagum is back. Um. At one, I I was never really a fan of the card. I think that inherently it causes weird it caused weird deck building decisions because you had to play multiples of extra deck monsters that you really didn't want to. For example, because this could snipe things out of your extra deck. But with some of the other changes, I can tolerate it. Um, it's not something I think that's going to be really relevant with some of the changes we're about to get to. So, Card Demise has gone to one. Um, I feel like it's had a long time coming. Card Demise has been a relevant draw card since the day it came out. And it going to one now is odd, but I don't really have a problem with it. I feel like it's been it's been an issue since the day it came out, so it makes sense. Limiting Diagram, I don't understand this hit. I mean, I'm guessing they're limiting it because they didn't want Draco to be the best deck, which is fair. You know, nobody wants to see Draco every round. I mean, I see it at the regionals enough as it is, but um, it's odd. But with Litho coming back, I I guess they felt that they really didn't couldn't have multiple one Litho come back and have Diagram at three. Um, they didn't want True King Dinos coming fully back. Into the Void is now limited. Um, why I don't know. I mean, are you, I guess you're hitting the Pendulum spell decks. You know, whatever. Pot of Avarice. Um, it's been banned for a very long time, and I am curious to see how many people play it. It's been at three in the OCG for quite some time, and it doesn't really see play that much. So this is the first time we've had Pot of Avarice in years. So it'll be interesting to see if if it sees play at all. Sekka's Lights is another really strange hit. I, why is this on the ban list? Like, are you really, really trying to encourage people to play other draw cards? Like, this is no business being on the ban list at all. Um, Red Reboot, this is a blatant... I think this and Pankertops both are blatantly on the ban list, so Konami can sell Lightning Storm. Konami wants to sell Lightning Storm, but if but if Red Reboot and Pankertops are at three, people won't want to play Lightning Storm. So this is literally Konami just hitting cards to sell future product, and we all know Lightning Storm is going to be insanely expensive. So, um, whatever. Um, Semi Limit Deep Sea Diva. This is to push the new Deep Sea Diva cards. Um, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I personally would say put it to three. I hate semi-limits, but they're emptying the semi-limit section, so I guess I can kind of forgive this a little bit. Tour Guide, this is the first time it's been above one from quite some time. Burning Abyss isn't relevant with Snow Band. Snow basically killed killed the deck's viability, so I'm perfectly fine with Tour Guide coming up from one, especially in a f today's day and age where Ash, Baylor, and other hand traps are popular staples. I do not like the semi-limit of mind control because it is a generic staple. Put it to one, put it to three. Stop fucking around. Um, so, unlimits. There's quite a few here. So, Dark Arm Dragon has come up come up to three. Good change, but it's not going to be relevant with Eclipse Wyvern banned. Uh, Lady Debug, this is a buff to Salomon Grates, and it helps to uh, Ignister, so makes sense. It's a good... Honestly, I feel like this having this is going to make Salomon Grates still very playable. Morphing Jar number two... Um, I'm not really, I feel like, I'm not really sure why this was banned in the first place, but, you know, I think there was, like, an empty jar of TK that was with Jackpot 7 or something that was relevant. I don't know. Uh, Damage Juggler, I said last list, that should be at 3. It's at 3 now. Good Konami. There's no reason, really, for Juggler to be on the ban list anymore, but, and with the new Shadal structure deck coming, it was a good, smart thing for Konami to go ahead and put it to 3. Tribe Infecting Virus, um, with that new monster that kind of does the same thing, Tribe had no business being on the ban list, and with the future Deep Sea Diva support and the fact that Tribe works with Atlanteans, 
you know, it made sense to go ahead and take it out. Kogari is going to three because Engage is banned. I'm perfectly fine with this. I would have preferred if they also pulled Anchor and Multi-Roll off the list, but I'm guessing Konami wants to want, it wants to slow roll pulling the other Sky Striker cards off the list. But personally, I am fine with Kagari being at three with Engage gone because that was the whole problem. Kagari recycling Engage so you could use it multiple times in a turn. Now, I will say, though, that I personally think you could have banned Kagari instead of Engage, and it wouldn't have been that big of an issue, and it would have hit the engine, which is one of the bigger problems, so you guys can debate that. But personally, I think that if you really, you could have avoided hitting Engage by banning this instead. Book of Moon, um, it's been at one for God knows how long. There was no reason for it to still be on the ban list, and in 2020, they finally pulled it off the ban list, like you, you're about... Two or three years too late, but good job finally getting it done. Rank Up Magic, I said last list, this should no longer be on the list with Rusty banned, and now that Azathoth is banned, it is perfectly fine. Um, there's not really a whole lot of crazy things you can do with it in 2019. I mean, Ophion, making an Ophion is not really that relevant, and it, you can make Requiem again, so that's nice. Um, Solemn Warning coming to three is pretty nice. Um, all the other Solemns are at three, so I really don't see why Warning was still on the list. I guess Konami thought the same thing. Soul Drain is at three. This is the first time this card has been at more than one since, I believe, Dragon Rulers. I believe that's why it was limited in the first place, because it hit, it was a really good floodgate against that deck. Um, it'll be interesting to see what this card does. If it, being at three means that you can effectively side deck it, it's a, you can actually side deck it now. And it's actually a pretty effective card against some decks. Um, you know, just being able to completely neuter entire graveyards with one card is still pretty strong, I think. So I'm, I'm going to be interesting to see. So overall, looking at this ban list, this is basically Konami completely nuking the format. This is the biggest format nuke we've had in almost in over four years since I would say the list in 2015 where they nuked Klee's, Shadals, and... Um, and a Necros all got massive, you know, hits. So this is a very s similar list where they are completely nuking the format because a lot of these decks have been hanging around for so long. They're finally getting... Now, I will say that some of these changes are pretty blatantly them trying to sell a future product, and some of the changes make absolutely no sense. And when I... When a, I can't... When p players can't figure out why a card was hit... I think that is a problem when you make your ban lists. So, um, obviously, no, most of us probably don't really have an idea what, why Konami does what they do. Um, but that is one of the biggest problems I do have with this list, is that I don't know why some of these cards were hit. And I think that is a big problem. But anyway, guys, um, I hope you did enjoy my ban list discussion today. Let me know what you guys think of the new ban list down in the comment section below. And as always, I thank you guys for watching. It's Warstorm signing out.